Lower Broadway becomes the fairway for gallant men. A gallery of 150,000 cheer him on, and all America echoes, welcome home, champion Ben Hogan. Sometimes I have a soft spot in my heart, and I don't mind telling you that this sort of thing uh, kind of brings tears to my eyes. Ben had a lot of qualities that were never recognized, I think qualities the public wouldn't see and never knew. Ben was a man of great compassion. I think Ben Hogan is a person that's really been misunderstood. He was a very shy person. The only way he could play was to get into this shell, and that was how he played his best, to be that way. He's taken a lot of criticism over the years for that, which is probably not really warranted. Ben Hogan's the greatest golfer that ever lived. Hogan only had 15 years and won 10 majors. In 15 years, he lost three years during the war. He lost 1949 because of the accident. So he didn't have that many good years. And look what he did with the few he had. Seven years later, at the 1960 U.S. Open at Cherry Hills outside Denver, Ben Hogan, at 47, made one last bid for glory while sharing the path with two extremely talented heirs. In 1960, three different eras came together. There was Ben Hogan in his last major tournament as a competitive force. Arnold Palmer, who was reaching the crescendo of his career, and Jack Nicklaus. My dad came to me and you know, I says, guess who you're paired with? And I said, Ben Hogan. I said, oh my gosh, fantastic. I mean, I saw just a magnificent exhibition of how to hit a golf ball. Cherry Hills is a very hilly golf course. I really didn't think that Hogan was capable physically of doing that well, but he sure proved me wrong. I held Hogan in great respect and to some degree some awe, but uh, he didn't scare me. The same couldn't be said for a 20-year-old Jack Nicklaus as he approached a short but critical putt on the 13th hole of the final round. Between him and the cup was uh, a ball mark or cleat mark, and he couldn't tell the difference. If it's a ball mark, you can repair it. Cleat mark, you can't. He was so intimidated by the presence of Ben Hogan that he didn't go ask Hogan to come over and look and see whether it was a spike mark or a ball mark. He said he missed that cup because of the mark. The miss dropped Nicholas one shot back, but Hogan stayed in the hunt, tied for the lead with Palmer as he headed to the 17th hole. He thought he had to finish birdie par to get a tie with Arnold because he thought Arnold was going to birdie the 17th hole. And the pin was up front, and there was a stream. There's water in front of the green, and Ben tried to cut a wedge in there and, and hit it close, and it was one foot short. That ball kept trickling, 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 and went in the water. I'm sure it broke his heart, particularly as he had played so well. He got very greedy, but he wanted to win. When you finish second, the only person to remember is your wife and your dog. So you got to win. It made for great theater. In a way, Arnie uh, was a, a reaction, or in, some would say an improvement, on, uh, on, on Ben Hogan. Palmer's final putt for a sensational closing 65. He came from behind like the man of steel that he is to wrap up the Open with a 72-hole, 280 score. It was the coronation of Arnold, who had won the Masters two months earlier. And it was the beginning of Nicholas. It was the end of Hogan, all in one day.